Hi, my name's Eve Kalinic. I'm a nutritional therapist and gut health specialist. I'm really excited to be talking to you guys about the microbiome today, a little bit about what it is, what it does, and why we need to take care of our microbiome, and also be thinking about some of the things that can positively and negatively affect the health of our microbiome. So the first thing we have to think about is what is the microbiome? And that essentially refers to all of the bacteria, fungus, parasites and viruses and their genetic material that live in and on us. The biggest collection of these reside in our gut and that's called the gut microbiome. It's really important to understand that each of our microbiomes is entirely individualistic, a bit like a fingerprint. So we need to work with our own individual gut microbiome. Another interesting fact about our microbiome is that it weighs around two kilograms, which is about the same size as your brain. And that's why it's being considered an organ in its own right. Some people say it's actually the forgotten organ because of the amount of things that our microbiome helps to manage. So now we need to think about what does the microbiome actually do for us? Well, one of the obvious things is it helps us with our digestion. So that means helping with absorption of nutrients from our food. The other thing that our microbiome does is produce lots of positive substances. Some of these include something called short chain fatty acids or the acronym SCFAs. One of most notable importance in the short chain fatty acids is butyrate. And butyrate is an anti-inflammatory substance produced by our gut microbes. This helps us to manage inflammation in the gut and more generally in the body. The other thing that our microbiome helps with is producing positive neurotransmitters. And these are like chemical messengers that are found in our brain. Things like serotonin, which is our happy hormone, and GABA that helps alleviate anxiety. And these are things that we always thought were just produced in our brain, but actually our microbiome produces almost 90 to 95% of our overall serotonin production. So beyond the gut itself, our microbiome has a much more far-reaching influence on our overall health and well-being. You might be surprised to know that 70 to 80% of our immune system is located in our gut. And it's our gut microbes that help to educate our immune cells to recognize friend from foe. The other area that's becoming of massive research and interest is the gut brain connection and the potential that our microbiome might have an influence on the way we think and feel and our mood. The more we discover about the microbiome, the more we realise its paramount importance in our overall health and well-being. To support the thriving existence of our microbiome, we need to think about the factors that might positively and negatively affect their health. When we think about factors that might impinge on the thriving existence of our microbiome, these can include things like a high intake of ultra-processed foods, so that means lots of a beige buffet, because that doesn't give us a lot in way of fibre. So we need to think about having a lot of diversity as well as quantity of fibre. And fibre you'll find in things like vegetables, fruits, nuts and seeds, and whole grains. And the thing is we want to really think about having a broad intake of those foods. So thinking about eating the rainbow, it sounds a cliche, but as far as the microbiome are concerned, that's all good for them. Another factor we need to consider in the health of our microbiome is the potential overuse of unnecessary medications. Now, of course we need to use medications when we need them, but where we might not necessarily need to take them. So things like antibiotics when you've got a cold or taking painkillers when you probably just need to drink a bit more water or just rest. Those are the types of things that can impact on our microbiome. One of the biggest factors by far though is stress. And I know stress is a loaded word, but when we talk about the effects of stress on the microbiome, things like the hormones like cortisol can have a negative impact on their health and well-being. So managing your stress is going to be key. Whatever works for you, that could be meditation, yoga, simple breathing exercises, or just going out for a walk. I always think that there's, a walk is always a good idea. Things that can positively affect our microbiome include eating the rainbow, so that is getting diversity in your fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds and whole grains. Not necessarily thinking about quantity, but getting different types of those foods into your diet. So it might be like riffing on your morning oats by using something like quinoa flakes or buckwheat, just putting a new vegetable into your online order or your vegetable boxes. Those are good ways of, and easy ways of getting diversity into your diet. 
Think about including fermented foods in your diet. These are foods that through the process of fermentation contain bacteria that's believed to be beneficial for our microbiome. So these include things like sauerkraut, kimchi, and cultured dairy in the way of cheese and yogurt. So you might want to add a few of those into your diet as well. You could also think about including a good supplement like Simpro to help boost the health of your microbiome. And one of the easiest things we can do, or maybe not for some, is sitting down and really taking time over our meals. So rest and digest, take time to chew your food thoroughly, think about the plate that's in front of you, and give your microbes and your microbiome a bit of a head start by chewing your food thoroughly. But with the chat around gut health that can seem a bit overwhelming, admittedly, it is important to bring it back to you and your gut, because what works for one person isn't necessarily going to work for you. But just remember, each meal time, be mindful that you sit down and dine with your microbiome.